All right, so thank you guys so much for being here. Um, we're really excited to share a little bit about our Medical Spanish Immersion Program. Um, my name is Regina and I'm here with my colleagues, Melanie um, and Bibiana. So uh, both Melanie and Bibiana attended Universidad Xochicalco School of Medicine. They're our partner medical school. Um, and Melanie's already graduated and is back in the States revalidating her studies to practice here in the States, and Indiana is finishing up her, um, her uh, degree, and she is one of our mentors as well. So if you guys want to just briefly introduce yourselves. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today and making time. Um, like Regina said, I'm Melanie. Um, I'm actually a UCR uh, alum. I studied neuroscience, and then after um, completing, <laughs> yeah, um, and so after completing at UC Riverside, I went to um, Universidad de Chicago um, and I studied medicine there um, and recently uh, graduated and I'm looking to apply to residency this year in neurology. Um, so any questions you may have about that, um, I will leave my information as well, but um, yes, so that's about me. Um, and I'll hand it over to Viviana so she can tell us a little intro about herself. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Viviana. Um, I practically went to high school. I've studied my whole life in San Diego. I went to Southwest High School, um, a little closer to the border. Um, I knew I wanted to study medicine, but unfortunately, financial aid and my economic situation wasn't really an uh, option that I could see doing it in the United States. So I tried to find anything close to home. And I found Suchicalco, and it says Chicalco, which was an amazing school. I'm still there. I'm still finishing up my my degree there. I'm in my last year, but it's been an amazing time collaborating with different doctors from different countries as well. Um, everybody was really welcoming. I wasn't really strong with my Spanish, but with the school and all the doctors, they were really supportive and they pushed me to understand the language. And right now I'm also, it's also part of my plan to revalidate in the States. So I kind of did a little bit more differently, but hopefully it all works out. And that's a little bit about me. I will leave my information as well if anybody has any questions. Thanks so much, Viviana. Um, and so Viviana is one of our medical Spanish student mentors. Um, so if you do our program, you'll meet a lot of current Xochicalco medical students and get to practice your Spanish with them. So she is one of our awesome mentors. Um, so just to introduce um, our organization, Zenu's mission is to build bridges across countries, cultures, and borders through education, and specifically to increase quality of care for diverse patients and Spanish-speaking patients by equipping both students and healthcare providers with the tools needed to properly serve the Latinx community. And we do this by offering trips, immersion programs, and courses through which we seek to facilitate mutually beneficial relationships for uh, participating students and healthcare providers to broaden the horizons and deepen the intercultural awareness of our participants by providing the opportunity to develop international connections, professional relationships, clinical shadowing experience, and research opportunities and projects in a unique way. So I always like to start off by um, talking about why this is necessary. So I, as you can see, um, the Hispanic population in the US is very large and only growing. Um, so we're at about 20% of the entire uh, country is Hispanic, so almost one in five. Um, a fun fact is after Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, and Spain, the US actually has the, the fifth highest concentration of native Spanish speakers, uh, over 40 million. Um, and any of the students that are here, do you have a sense of the percentage of California that is Hispanic, if you had to guess? Diane or Sandy, but do you have a, a Sandy, guess? Sandy, Sandy says 70. 70. What was that? 70? 75. 75. Okay, so that's quite high. So I understand why you would think that living in Riverside, um, because in Riverside, um, it is, I believe, 30, 34 per, or sorry, Riverside County, it's 52%. In California overall, it's still quite high. It's uh, at 38%. Um, and then in Riverside County, also 34% of um, folks speak Spanish at home. And 38% uh, of Spanish speakers in California self-report on the census that they speak English less than very well. But unfortunately, we know that the percentage of providers who are able to provide culturally and linguistically appropriate care for this population isn't quite growing at the same rate. 
Um, so in 2018, Dr. Sonia Diaz from UCLA, she researched to what extent the Spanish-speaking population in California vastly outnumbers the population of Spanish-speaking physicians. So she found that in the greater Bay Area, there is only 3% of Spanish-speaking physicians to treat up to 22% of the Spanish-speaking population. In the San Diego area where San Diego was located, only 5% of Spanish-speaking physicians were available to treat up to 33% of the population. And then in LA County, only 5% of Spanish-speaking physicians were able Able to treat up to 47% of the population. Um, so, you know, language barriers are one example of a systemic equity and social determinant of health that leads to discrepancies in healthcare for marginalized populations. Um, and this has real consequences, such as during the pandemic, um, Latinos contracted COVID-19 twice as much as their white counterparts. They were almost three times as, li as likely to be hospitalized and twice as likely to die. So a language barrier, of course, means that patients and providers can't communicate effectively and accurately, and this can be dangerous. Uh, we know that a lack of clarity and understanding leads to decreased confidence and also patient outcomes, because when a patient can't fully describe what's going on with them and their symptoms, or they don't understand what the doctor is sharing with them um, and their medication and treatment plan, a lot is falling through the cracks. But on the other hand, uh, when doctors are able to treat patients in the patient's own language, the patient is able to make themselves understood and to understand the provider's explanations. Um, and so these patients report feeling more confident that they have a stronger relationship of trust with their provider. And of course, uh, this leads to improved patient outcomes too. So that is our reason for being, um, and that is why we partner with Universidad Xochicalco um, to bring these medical Spanish courses, trips, and immersion programs. Um, so just briefly, uh, Universidad Xochicalco is a university in the northwest region of Mexico in the state of Baja California, which was founded nearly 50 years ago, and it offers a wide variety of studies and degrees, including 14 bachelor's degree programs, 18 master's degrees, and a full medical school on each of the three campuses. So you can see visually here, we have the Tijuana campus um, right by the border, only 30 minutes uh, south of the border, the Mexicali campus, and also the Ensenada campus. So that is where the immersion program is located. Um, and if you are interested in potentially uh, doing medical school outside of the US, um, that is an option too. So you can feel free to reach out to Melanie. I think she provided her email in the chat um, or uh, Viviana to learn a little bit more about when you were at so Chicago School of Medicine. Um, so just briefly, Hopefully, um, Xochicalco has been around for nearly 50 years. It is fully accredited by the Mexican Council for the Accreditation of Medical Education, or the COMAIM, and by the Association of Mexican Faculties and Schools of Medicine, or the AMFEM. Internationally, it is included in the World Directory of Medical Schools and in the International Medical Education Directory, which is published by the Foundation for Advancement of International Medical Education and Research. Um, and you, if you come to the immersion program, you'll get to take uh, classes in Xochicalco state-of-the-art facilities, including the clinical simulation center with the dummies that you can practice on, and also the virtual morphology room with the Anadamash table, um, which if you haven't seen one or worked with one, is a 3D anatomy visualization and virtual dissection tool for learning anatomy and physiology. Um, and so we do offer some other programs other than the immersion program, including our virtual courses um, and short trips too for students who live closer to the border, um, as well as international clinical rotations for current medical students. So I'm just going to go through those super quickly because I know you're more interested in the immersion program. Um, so you can just kind of keep this in the back of your head if you do attend the uh, medical school in the U.S. and you're in your third or fourth year and you're interested in international clinical rotations, we offer them at the Tijuana campus um, in four specialties. Um, but I really want to focus on the immersion program. So that is uh, July 3 through the 14th. And it is full immersion. So you'll be living and breathing Spanish for two weeks. And our goal is for you to even start dreaming in Spanish by the end of the program. So you stay with a host family, you attend medical Spanish classes on campus, taught by our partner MDs and medical school faculty. You practice speaking with your peer mentors like Dr. Viviana, observe clinical shadowing in clinics and hospitals, and you participate in a global public health and community medicine program by going into rural communities and gathering health data through direct surveys. And also it's a lot of fun. So um, just some of these pictures, we have um, some of 
some pictures of Universidad Xochicalco's campus. Um, also one of our partner clinics up at the top left. Um, the bottom left picture is out in the community during the community medicine program. Um, top right is one of our partner hospitals. Um, also right next to that is a picture of Valle de Guadalupe, um, which I'll talk to you more about, but it is, um, you know, Mexico's uh, Napa Valley pretty much. So we take you to the wine region um, and you get to do the wine tour and tasting if you want to. And then the bottom um, is the anatomage table as well. So as mentioned, um, every part of this program is hosted in collaboration with the School of Medicine at Universidad Xochicalco. So um, not only will you learn from the faculty, but you'll also be mentored by and practice with the peer mentors um, from Mexico. And our core pillars of the program are, of course, medical Spanish. So you learn not only the technical, but also the colloquial terminology that patients are more likely to use. Um, you'll also uh, take general Spanish classes to boost your language skills and confidence. Um, research, so this is in blue because it's optional. Um, for students with a higher Spanish level. So if you come in with already, either if you are a heritage speaker or you um, just have a higher level of Spanish and you want to link up with one of the peer mentors and work on a research project together, that is an option um, that you have available to you. And that also looks really nice on uh, a CV if you can show that you've put together a research project collaboratively um, with someone from another country and you've presented it in Spanish. Um, it's nice to add to your CV. Um, and if you, you know, really um, are working on a project that you're very interested in and you want to ma make it longer than the two weeks, you definitely don't have to stop once the program is over. You have that option to continue working with, um, whether you're working with faculty or peer mentors, you can keep working on that project. Um, community is also a very important part, and I'll talk to you more about the Global Public Health and Community Medicine Program. And then culture, also super important. We don't want you to just learn Spanish and learn terminology, but also really understand the culture and have fun. Um, so I'll talk to you more about the cultural activities too. So um, before the program starts, we do assess each student's level um, using the CEFR language proficiency standards and group stu students according to their level. So the students that are more in the A1 to B1 range, um, they'll be taking general Spanish classes that focus more on syntax, conjugation, and speaking and understanding, along with the medical Spanish classes too. And then the students that are, again, more advanced, B B2 and above, um, along with the medical Spanish classes that everybody takes. They'll also be in a class that's a little more advanced, uh, focus on research methods and epidemiology and academic reading and writing in Spanish. So the first week is the doctor-patient relationship unit. Um, so the students will learn basic Spanish expressions, so how to greet their patients warmly and in culturally responsive ways. They'll learn how to establish rapport with patients in order to build a provider-patient relationship built on trust, honesty, and empathy. They'll learn um, the formal technical terms for anatomy, symptoms, and conditions, as well as, as I mentioned, the more slang or colloquial references that patients are more likely to use. Uh, for example, uh, you know, a patient is more li likely to say, me duele la panza or me duele el estómago when they're referring, or me duele la barriga when they're referring to el estómago or el abdomen. So we think it's really important to learn, you know, all the different registers of the medical terminology. Um, you also learn how to interview patients about their medical history and learn how to analyze and understand these medical histories. And lastly, you learn to understand the patient's cultural background and expectations, including customary beliefs and diet and lifestyle habits. So it goes just beyond the language um, to learn how does, you know, typical, uh, typical Latino diet and lifestyle lead to certain health outcomes. And then the second week is the patient conditions unit. So this is when students learn much more in depth about conditions, anatomy, and organ systems. So really going in deep into el sistema respiratorio, el sistema cardiovascular, digestivo, el sistema nervioso, endocrinólogo, and so forth. Um, you learn terminology regarding special patients like pediatrics and geriatrics. You'll learn to share diagnoses and treatment plans and also to communicate medication and discharge instructions. And you'll also participate in the public health and community medicine module where you'll shadow providers in rural underserved communities. 
So here are some pictures of our medical Spanish classes. So in the middle, we have our um, main instructor, Dr. Ortiz. So he teaches you everything for the first half of class, which is the theory part. And then the second half is the practice. Um, so that's what the rest of the pictures show is we uh, pair you up with the peer mentors, which are the Xochicalco medical students like Viviana. And um, you know our, our goal is to have one-on-one -on -one interaction, but sometimes the groups will be a little bit bigger, like one um, Mexican student with two or three American participants, but it will, will never be too much bigger than that. So you always have that individualized attention. Um, and we often see this, you know, instant connection between our students and the mentors, since they're typically around the same age, they share similar passions and goals of becoming better providers. Um, and our men mentors are super supportive and eager to share everything that they've learned um, throughout their medical education, and they're often curious to, to hear about how medical education and healthcare works in the U.S. So this leads to lots of interesting discussions, um, even beyond the practice sessions, and ideally leads to friendships as well. And that's what we love to see when uh, mentors and students become friends um, and still stay in touch beyond the program. And similarly with uh, host families, we love to see when um, participants and their host families are still in touch and really made that connection, even after the two weeks. So here are some pictures of the, um, of the shadowing portion. So beyond the shadowing at clinics and hospitals, you'll also be shadowing at Ferias de Salud or outdoor community health fairs. Um, so this one was one that Viviana actually came with us on. Um, and uh, it, there were booths on health literacy and education, so specifically antibiotic resistance, why patients shouldn't um, you know, take antibiotics without a doctor's prescription, um, self-screening for breast cancer for women, um, basic hygiene and nutrition for children and families, risk factors for certain common conditions among uh, Latino patients, and then also preventative measures and screenings for hypertension, diabetes, and other risk factors, as well as I think there was a vaccination clinic for the flu vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccine. So if there's anything I'm missing, Viviana, feel free to jump yeah. in. Oh, you, you pretty much summed it up pretty well, but yes, uh, practically what we do, uh, or what we did, uh, we go to more uh, underserved communities as well to bring in information. So one thing as a health provider and future health providers, one thing that's really important is teaching. We have to teach other people about diseases, about medications, about antibiotics, about vaccinations. So from a very first stage, we start doing that with different communities. And like how Regina said right now, uh, breast cancer awareness. Um, why you shouldn't take antibiotics, what to do if your baby has a fever. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of, of lack of or misinformation out there. So that's why it's really important to update patients, to update the community on what to do. And that's practically what we do here. And it's really, it's really interesting um, seeing how we can connect with different people and how you can just learn to interact with other different communities, um, also different age groups. So that, that really does bring in that experience. So Universidad Xochicalco believes that doctors should not only be experts on individual pathologies, but also be engaged in understanding the needs of the community around them, um, and also health promotion and prevention measures. Um, so that's really the heart and soul of the public health and community medicine program. And so every Xochicalco medical student participates in this from the very beginning, um, from their very first semester of medical school. Um, and so you will, the first the first visit, you'll shadow um, all the questions that are asked in the underserved communities to each family, and then you'll have a chance to ask the questions yourself um, to the families. So, um, you know, some of the questions that are asked, I think I have the form right here. So these are, you know, some of the questions that we wouldn't think to ask in the States, but um, based on the living conditions uh, where these folks live, they're necessary to ask and to understand how these living conditions also affect health. Um, and what's really interesting too, is that this, all this health data that's collected is then shared with the um, health authorities, the Secretaria de Salud, uh, the health authorities of the state of Baja California to come up with health interventions on a community level. So here you can just see uh, sure what your Spanish level is, but um, these are some of the questions that are asked. So for example, calles, um, si hay pavimiento o no, no hay pavimiento. So if um, the streets are paved or not, what kind of transporte or transport these families are using, um, the material their homes are built out of, um, what kind of animals are around, and then more in depth in terms of their health. Um, so for example, I think we have here, 
diabetes. So if anybody in the family has diabetes, hypertension or high blood pressure, obesidad, obesity, um, any type of cancer or cancer, um, tuberculosis, uh, tuberculosis, unfortunately, is very common in the region too. Uh, rickettsiosis, rickettsia, VIH or HIV. So it's very comprehensive. We go through and ask, you know, for every member of the household what um, the health conditions are. And then also, um, you know, alimentación diaria or what the uh, nutrition of each person in the house is, for how many times a week they're having vegetables, fruits, um, and so forth. Um, salud reproductiva um, or reproductive health for women of childbearing age, and then vaccination status as well. So this is, you know, a typical day during the program besides your uh, medical Spanish classes and then the other either uh, language class or the epidemiology class you'll be shadowing at a hospital um, at a uh, the, the community health um, the, sorry, the rural communities, and then also the cultural uh, part is so important too. So you'll be having dinner with your host family. And then as I mentioned on that Saturday, we'll take you to Valle de Guadalupe. So that's the really fun day where you can kind of sit back and um, take a break from all the academics um, and really just enjoy being in Mexico and being in Ensenada. And here are some more pictures of the cultural activities that we do. So, um, in the middle here, we have Valle de Guadalupe. So again, you learn how the grapes are harvested for the wine and all about um, the winemaking process in Ensenada, which is such a big part of the region, the culture and the economy. Um, also, Loteria. So I'm not sure if you guys have played Loteria before, but it's like Mexican bingo. So we play, you know, both traditional Loteria and also Loteria with Mexican, uh, with uh, medical Spanish uh, vocabulary. And then um, folkloric dance. So we have a folkloric dance workshop and also some cooking classes. Um, so there's actually a gastronomy lab on campus where you will learn how to cook a Mexican meal with um, from a chef at Xochicalco. Um, and the school is pretty close to the downtown. So we'll have you go to the local market at Mercado Negro and buy um, you know fresh ingredients and then come back to campus and learn how to make the meal. So that's kind of nice when you go back home and you can share with your family the Mexican meal that you know how to make. Um, also at the beaches, so here is a picture of some of our participants and mentors um, at the beach by the Ensenada sign. Um, we also have a nice bonfire with everybody, which is always fun. And then, um, as I mentioned, take you to Valle de Guadalupe. Um, so again, really interesting just to see how the wine is made. And also Ensenada is really considered a gastronomic center of Mexico. So the food is very good. And then some more pictures of, um, for example, we have Carmen, one of our previous participants with her host family, and then Dr. Ortiz during the community medicine uh, module. And then, as I mentioned before, you know, just seeing these intercultural friendships, that's one of the best parts of the program um, is to finish this program and you now have, you know, colleagues and friends from another culture that you are still connected to um, is really special. So if you do complete the program, you will receive a certificate of achievement upon completion. Um, so this is for a student who completed one of our virtual courses, but of course, if you complete our um, immersion program, that's what will be on there. And if you complete the first week, it will have that you completed the doctor-patient relationship unit. If you complete both weeks, it will also have the doctor, patient, sorry, the um, patient conditions unit. And do you guys know about the AAMC core competencies? I think some of the pre-med folks, if you're older, um, you know, junior, senior, you probably know a little about the about the AAMC core competencies, but this is the um, American Association of Medical Colleges. So these are some of the competencies that they're looking for in their incoming uh, medical students. Um, so these are the ones that we focus on, oral communication, um, which you practice by, you know, learning and practicing medical and colloquial Spanish, cultural competence, of course, and teamwork as you're befriending and collaborating with students from a different culture in a different language, service orientation and social skills as you're shadowing providers in rural communities and working towards health equity for low-income communities. And then also resilience and adaptability. Um, of course, you know, you're living with a different family in a different country and speaking another language, even if, you know, you are a heritage speaker in the U.S., you know, we're not speaking Spanish 24-7. So definitely it takes a resilience and adaptability. 
And then I always like to mention some of our awesome alumni that are working on um, some amazing projects in their communities after being part of the program. So we have Adriana Brancaccio on the left uh, from UCSD. So she was accepted into her dream PA program. And part of that had to do with the letters of recommendation that she received from the doctors in our program. Um, Daniel Sai, he's actually from UC Riverside Medical School. So once he finished the program, he began to lead pláticas or conversations about public health, safety, and preventative measures in local Latino communities, all in Spanish. And then on the right, we have Perla Saldovar from UC Riverside. And so she actually published a cookbook for Latino preventative measures with the guidance of the nutrition department at Universidad de Chicalco. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, where if you have something, um, you know, a research topic um, that you're really interested in, you can, you know, work on something that's beyond just the two-week program and publish something um, if that's what you're interested in. And I recently received this note from one of our participants of a trip, um, Reynaldo, and he said, I just wanted to let you know that I was able to volunteer at the Refugee Health Alliance in Tijuana, and I went in super confident compared to Prisaneu, where I would have been sweating bullets. I was able to triage, take chief complaints, symptoms, medical and social histories of over 80 patients, thanks to all the, uh, thanks to all the help from the students and staff of Xochicalco. So just to recap, I know that was a lot of information, but the first week is really about learning and practicing terminology in various clinical contexts. It's about you know, starting to meet and hopefully befriend the peer mentors with whom you'll practice both you know, just conversational fluency as well as actual clinical dialogues. Um, you'll begin the immersion and full immersion in Spanish language and in Mexican culture through relationships with peer mentors um, and your host family and start to explore all that Ensenada has to offer. And then week two is all about learning specific terminology, both technical and colloquial regarding um, anatomy and bodily systems. You'll participate in the community health surveys and learn how to analyze this data. You have the chance to participate in binational research projects with your peer mentors if you choose to. And um, you will also take part in fun cultural activities and trips around Ensenada. And in general, when, once you finish this program, you will you know, know how to communicate with Spanish speaking patients effectively and with empathy. You will um, have had the chance to network, develop relationships with faculty and MDs, which also means you have the opportunity to receive letters of recommendations for whatever um, program that you're interested in. And you will have contributed to furthering health equity um, for Spanish speaking communities on both sides of the border. So the cost of this program, it does take a, long, a lot to make the program happen. We have over 30 participants in Mexico, including faculty, peer mentors. Um, so the cost is $1,200 a week, but it does include everything. And the nice thing about you guys being um, already in Southern California is that you don't have to book a flight. You don't have to pay extra, you know, to get to Spain or to get to South America. Um, not a lot of people have the opportunity to just drive down a couple of hours and be in another country. Um, so it does include, you know, once you get to the border, um, it includes all of the transportation, downtown Sanada, all around town, and then back to the border when it's over. Also, the family homestay, all the meals, um, the extensive medical Spanish student manual, workbook, and glossary, as well as all the classes and academic activities, including 35 plus hours of instruction, and also the public health and community medicine module with at least five uh, um, guided shadowing visits, including in the community, at clinics and hospitals. And then all the cultural activities as well that I mentioned, cooking dance workshops, the tour of Ensenada, the beaches, beach bonfire, um, and then uh, the winemaking tours and optional tastings at Valle de Guadalupe. Um, as well as a certificate of completion and pre-departure orientation and staff support throughout the entire trip. So we also have some um, partial scholarship options. So if you um, are willing to help, once the program is over, if you're willing to help um, the Mexican students practice their English uh, virtually, then um, you can take off $120 per week that you participated in. Um, so for example, if you participate both weeks, you would get $240 off and um, donate 10 hours of your time as an English mentor. If you participate just the first week, um, you would um, help out the 
as an English mentor for five hours and receive $120 off. Um, and we know even with that, it still can be hard um, to pay. So we do offer interest-free payment plans so that you don't have to pay all at once. You can pay through um, six months, I believe. So we really wanna make this work for everyone. Um, and then some upcoming dates. So there's still a couple of weeks for uh, the partial you know, application with the partial scholarship. And then um, to apply for the program, um, the last date is June 20th. And then the program dates, the first week is July 3rd through the 8th. And then the second week is July 9th through the 14th. Um, and if you are um, interested in doing this or any other um, programs internationally, I definitely recommend to um, make sure that you have an unexpired passport. And if you don't, then um, to get that started so that you can have it in time for the program. Um, and then if you guys are interested in checking us out on social media, um, we have a lot more, you know, pictures of our trips and little videos. Um, so you can check us out at Seneu International. Um, you can reach out to me at Regina at Seneu.com or check out our website at Seneu.com. Um, so thank you so much. Do you guys have any questions? Let me check the chat to see if there has been other questions. But feel free if any questions come up um, to reach out uh, regina at seneo.com with any questions. And um, if we have a few minutes, I was hoping to do a quick uh, demo of a, a patient interaction with our mentors. So let me check the time. I think we still have a few minutes. So the, um, kind of like an example dialogue that you may um, eventually, that you will eventually learn to have with your patient. Yes, go ahead, doctora. All right. Buenas tardes, señora Doral. Me llamo doctora Reyes. Seré el médico que la atenderá el día de hoy. Mucho gusto, doctora. ¿Cómo le puedo ayudar? Vengo porque he tenido un dolor de cabeza por mucho tiempo. Ok. ¿Me puede decir específicamente cuándo empezó el dolor? Pues creo que empezó hace dos semanas, más o menos. Ok. ¿Y en qué parte de la cabeza le duele? Me duele más en la parte de atrás, en la nuca, doctora. Ok. ¿Y qué tan fuerte es el dolor, señora Dora? Pues a veces fuerte, a veces no muy fuerte, doctora. Ok. ¿Y qué tan fuerte en una escala del 1 al 10? Es un 8, doctora. Ahorita es un 8. Ok. ¿Hay algunas cosas que mejoren o empeoren el dolor? Me parece que hay algunos, algunos movimientos que lo empeoran. Muy bien. ¿Y me podría describir el dolor? ¿Es como si le aplastaran la cabeza, como si fuera opresivo? ¿O si es algo como que le estuviera atravesando, transfictivo? ¿O como si algo le estuviera quemando, como si fuera urente? Eh, no, doctora, nada de eso. Más bien es un dolor que viene y va con el latido de mi corazón, como pulsátil. Comprendo, señora Durán. Por último, ¿existe alguna otra molestia o dato que usted haya notado desde que, desde que inició el dolor? Pues a decir verdad, doctora, solamente noté que ayer estaba senta, sentada viendo la televisión, comenzó el dolor de cabeza y de pronto me sangró la nariz. Ok. ¿Y sangró mucho? No, fue poco. Me puse un tapón con una servilleta y a los min minutos ya dejó de sangrar. Ok, ¿y no volvió a ocurrir ese episodio? No, solo esta vez. Muy bien, señora Durán. ¿Qué le parece si procedemos a revisarla? Me parece muy bien, doctora. Ok, pase usted de este lado para la sala de exploración. Sería eh, una mini diálogo, que, una interacción entre un paciente y, y el, el estudiante. Entonces, este es un ejemplo de lo que participamos en nuestras clases. Eh, vemos los temas como los que comentó Regina, dependiendo de cada semana, qué tema vamos a estar viendo. Um, so what I'm saying is like every week we see a different topic. And then after we're done, we do little breakout rooms where we have individual conversations like the one we just practiced right now, where you have your mentor that will correct you and will help you in case you don't know how to pronounce something and you have a question about something. So you can have conversations like the ones me and Dr. Uh, Duran just had right now. Yeah, thanks so much for that. Did any of the students pick up on what was going on with the patient? 
maybe just for students who, um, you know, their Spanish isn't quite so advanced, uh, could you guys do it in, in English real quick? Yeah, of course. All right. Are you ready, Dr. Zara? Yeah, okay. I think your micro your microphone is on. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. I'm ready. Now I'm ready. All right. I'm going to start. Okay. Good afternoon, Ms. Duran. My name is Dr. Reyes. I will be your doctor today. How can I help you? Nice to meet you, doctor. Um, I came because I've had a headache for a long time. Okay. Could you specify when the pain started? Well, I think it started two weeks ago or so. Okay. And what part of your head does it hurt? It hurts more in the back, in my neck, doctor. Okay, and how hard, how strong is this pain? Well, sometimes strong, sometimes not very strong, doctor. All right, and how strong on a scale of one to 10? An eight, doctor. Right now, it's an eight. All right, and are there some things that improve or make the pain worse? It seems to me that there are some movements that make it worse. Okay, could you describe the pain? Would you say that it's a type of pain that presses down your head, like it's oppressive? Or would you say that it's transfective, that it goes through your head? Or would you say that it's urine, where it's like a burning sensation? No, Doc, nothing like that. Rather, it is a pain that comes and goes with the beating of my heart, like pulsating. All right, I understand, Ms. Duran. Last thing. Is there any other detail or thing that is bothering you that you've noticed since the pain started? Well, to tell you the truth, doctor, I only noticed that yesterday I was sitting watching television. The pain in my head began and suddenly my nose started to bleed. Was there a lot of blood? No, a little. I put a plug in with a napkin and within minutes, the bleeding stopped. And did this episode occur again? No, just that once. All right, Ms. Duran, uh, we're going to proceed to check you out, okay? Sounds good to me, Doc. All right, and then we would pass to explore the patient. Yes. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, can one of you talk about just briefly about atelier, since that's something that we see here? So during these uh, classes that we have, we learn different types of acronyms like atelier, where we explain to the students how they can take control of that conversation to avoid getting confused and receiving all this information from their patients. So in this case, we would follow the acronym, which would be A for when it started, aparición, T for time, how much time, cuánto tiempo uh, lleva el paciente con el dolor, how much time the patient has with the pain, I, which would be where it started, where the, the pain started specifically, L would be the location. Uh, the other I is for intensity. If you notice, I asked uh, from a scale of one to 10, how strong is the pain? And this is like a scale that is universally used in order to receive information from the, from the patient of how bad it hurts. Um, e, if there's any, any extra symptoms that are that are the patient could be feeling. If you notice, I also asked that. And then Dr. Duran told me that she was bleeding. So that would be another thing that could be asked. And if there's any like factors that influence this pain as well. So this acronyms, uh, these type of acronyms are the ones that we teach our students so they could dominate their conversations with their patients. Thank you so much for that overview, Viviana. Okay, great. Um, I don't know if anyone has Yes, somebody had a question about um, just general information about the host family, um, how many people, and um, just kind of a general, a more general sense of, so I'm just going to quickly explain to everybody. Um, and you can add, Regina, you've actually, like from prior programs, you know, any, any of uh, their experiences, but I went with someone who didn't, you know, fully speak, um, actually, she didn't speak any Spanish, so I accompanied her. And the family that we had dinner with were the sweetest, most loving. I fell in love. I did. It was late at night because um, they have dinner a little bit later. And I did not want to leave. We didn't want to leave. The food that they made us was delicious. And the conversation was so fun. So um, in terms of safety, definitely nothing to worry about. They are the kindest. Like we make sure that, you know, they're known from the university. It's not that we trust them. Um, so 
never any issue of that, if that might be. Um, I hope that answers any question. I don't know if you have anything to add, Regina. I know we're yeah, definitely. So each family is affiliated, as Melina mentioned, is affiliated with Universidad de Chicago. Ideally, um, we want families that have you know have a student um, in the medical school or a Sochicalco student um, that is the same age as you. That's ideal. But regardless, every family is affiliated with Sochicalco, um, and we do you know different screening steps. So we do interviews with the family um, to make sure that they can um, you know take the student and. And we visit the home to make sure that the neighborhood is safe um, and, you know, that there's enough space and, um, you know, just different things to, to make sure that it's going to be a good fit. Um, and then we just need to know if you have any uh, dietary restrictions or any allergies to, to pets or anything like that or any preferences. Um, when I went and I had the host family experience, too, with a Xochicalco family, she was actually um, the head of nursing at Xochicalco and just the sweetest um, lady and cooked me the most delicious meals. And um, I um, because I am a bit big cat lover, um, I was placed with this family, um, this woman who had, I think, like over six cats. So I had a great time. And so really, we just want to know kind of, yeah, any um, details about you and your, your preferences, restrictions, anything like that. Um, and that helps to pair you up with a host family. I don't have uh, any further questions from um, that I received. So should I show the video now? Yeah, uh, yes, actually, you know what, maybe let me show um, the testimonial video real quick because that's shorter and then if we have time we can show the other video so let me know if you can any more questions it. keep sending in the chat um, or feel free to ask here if anybody else while she sets that up. This one is super quick. Can you see the video. Yes. Okay, so you'll see some UCR medical students here. Too. Gracias por elegir la Universidad de Xochicalco. Nuestros valores compartidos de comunidad, empatía, humanidad, salud pública y medicina preventiva nos hicieron un gran I believe it was a terrific opportunity to be partnered uh, with you guys as part of UCR School of Medicine because um, we learned a lot about the health disparities um, in Spanish terms. And I believe that's really important in helping a community in Riverside is where a lot of the patients uh, can only speak Spanish. Universidad de Xochicalco was an amazing choice. I was so glad that I got to pair up with them. The faculty and staff were so supportive, so kind, and just so inviting from the beginning to the end. And the students were awesome. I truly enjoyed interacting with them and getting to know them, and I would definitely do it again. Okay, so just a couple of testimonials and then, um, sorry, were there other questions? I'll check quickly in the chat. Yes, Sandy, you will have access to this recording. I believe um, Professor Scruggs will upload it onto uh, the YouTube channel. And um, yes, I think we probably have time for that last video, Melanie. So right. this, oh, this is the video um, that shows uh, visually, you can see you know, us picking up at the border and what it's like to drive down. Um, you also learn a little bit about, because there's a stop in the video at the Tijuana campus, um, but we will go straight to the Ensenada campus, but you'll learn a little bit about the Tijuana, um, the region and the culture. Um, and then you'll see also, you know, how we got down to Ensenada and a little bit about the Ensenada campus too. We have a question out of the payments work and the partial scholarship. Okay, so for the partial scholarship, you just need to let us know that you are interested in um, doing the either, you know, if you come one week, the five hours as an English mentor, or if you come both weeks, you can do up to 10 hours as an English mentor. Um, and so that is on our website. I can just show you on our website. I believe it's here. So you go to seneu.com, which I'll, I can put this in the chat as well. And then if you click on medical Spanish immersion, sorry, my computer is taking a while to load, but you click on medical Spanish immersion and then scroll down to the bottom. And so here are different um, payment options. So for example, it can be a little confusing because there's a lot of options, but um, if you know you wanna do the first week, only, only the first week, then that's your option. If you can pay in full, you can do that the first option. Um, and if you want to take part in the um, five hours of as an English mentor, then you would click the Seneo alumni. That's the special pricing. And then if you want to do just the first week, um, but uh, want to pay with a monthly 
up to, I think, uh, five months with this one. Then you choose the last option, five month plan with um, the partial scholarship in exchange for those five hours as an English mentor. And then at the bottom, if you wanna do the two weeks um, and you can pay in full, feel free to choose that option. Um, and then the very last option would be if you wanna come both weeks, um, but wanna do, this is a six month plan. Um, and then the bottom option here is also both weeks, uh, six month plan, but with the partial scholarship. So. I know that might be a little confusing because there's so many options, but if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out and, and I can help guide you to which option is right for you. This has been great. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Regina. For Thank you Melanie. For Thank you, Viviana. We will post yeah. this video to our YouTube channel and um, I just um, posted it in the chat. So we have a wide variety of um, videos from the Health Professions Advising Center. We'll also, Regina, whenever you're ready to send it over, we'll, we will post it there. Um, and additionally, um, you can access our website if you have uh, additional questions about pre-health advising. Um, we have a fairly robust website with information about um, health professions careers, um, this program, uh, how to get clinical community service, research experience, um, as well as course information, pre-health prerequisite course information. And um, we also have an, an ambassador program. So um, we're really happy to um, help serve you. And thank you to Sanu for providing this information. I think this is really fantastic for our students to take advantage of specifically just the area that we're in. Um, this can be really um, apropos to um, future service in healthcare. And I think also just a, a really cool engaging event that you would have the opportunity to participate in as a college student. So something to think about. Thank you so much for hosting us. Um, and I did drop the interest form in the chat too. So if you guys want to fill that out, if you have any further questions that we didn't get to, it can definitely reach out to you and help answer all those questions. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. And thank you to our students who participated. And please do reach out if you have questions. Yes. And best of luck with the end of the quarter. Yes. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Hasta luego.